This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 562, Mortgage as a Forced Savings Account to Build Wealth, by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And I'm your narrator, Dan. I am here each weekday, and I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. Before we get to today's post, I want to give a big thank you to DesignCrowd for their support. DesignCrowd is a website that helps entrepreneurs, startups, and small businesses, from accountants and dentists to financial planners, marketers, and consultants, outsource or crowdsource custom logo, business card, and web design from designers around the world. For a special $100 VIP offer for our listeners, check out designcrowd.com slash finance to learn more and save up to $100 when you start your next project. That's designcrowd, D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com forward slash finance or simply enter the discount code finance when posting a project on designcrowd. For now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Mortgage as a Forced Savings Account to Build Wealth by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com Back in 2000, many investors were cocky, much like investors today with the stock market at record highs. I remember asking my director at the time what he thought about the concept of the mortgage as a forced savings account. At the time, as an investor, it appeared he could do no wrong. He said, I don't need no forced savings account. Only irresponsible people who don't have the discipline to save every month would consider their mortgage as savings. I'd rather have as big of a mortgage as possible so I can make money in the stock market. My director ended up losing millions when the dot-com bubble collapsed. He no longer looked down on people who slowly grew their wealth. At least, unlike most people, he had millions to lose. If you have a traditional mortgage that pays down principal and interest, The mortgage forces you to save because you are forced to pay your mortgage every month if you want to keep your property. A percentage of each mortgage payment goes toward principal, which can be considered savings. I'm also in the camp that believes it's better for most people to receive a tax refund even though it's like giving the government an interest-free loan because most people can't save for Are you responsible enough to save the same amount? After paying off $460,500 in mortgage debt in 12 years, I've had time to reflect on whether a mortgage can really be considered a savings account. If this rental property was all I had, I'd be considered house rich, cash poor because my ratio of home equity to liquid cash would be around 10 to one. The reality is my physical property portfolio accounts for less than 40% of my total net worth if I exclude my online business. If I include my online business as part of my net worth, then property accounts for less than 25% of my net worth. Contrast this to the average homeowning American who has a scary 80% of net worth in property. Let's ignore my property's appreciation over the past 12 years and solely focus on the $460,500 in debt I paid down compared to whether I would have been able to save $460,500 during the same period. The easiest comparison is principal payoff versus 401k savings. If I maxed out my 401k from 2003 to 2015, I would have saved $204,005. That's exactly what I did. Remember, the maximum contribution limit in 2003 was only 12,000 and slowly rose by 500 to 1,000 dollar increments to the current $18,000 maximum in 2015. Contributing to a 401k is just as easy as paying a mortgage once you make 401k contributions automatic. The money is deducted pre-tax from your gross income, so the hit doesn't feel as bad and you never see the money in the first place. The issue is, saving $204,500 in my 401k is still $256,500 less than the mortgage debt I paid off during the same period. Even with stock market returns, profit sharing, and company matching, my 401k only grew to a little over $400,000. Where did the rest of the money go? This is the question I think most people have. We spend years making all this money and wonder why we don't have much to show for all of our efforts. Ever wonder where all the cash you withdrew from the ATM went? I do. The simple reason for not being able to accumulate wealth as prodigiously as expected is because money is like water and we're a leaky ship sailing through an unpredictable storm. Something seems to always come up. A mortgage is dumb and easy at the same time. Most people responsibly pay their mortgages through the good and bad times. If you don't, your credit gets crushed 
you won't be able to borrow at normal rates for years, and you'll ultimately end up losing your down payment and perhaps more if you purchased in a recourse state. Given the bottom 90% of Americans have had an average savings rate between minus 3% and 5% over the past 20 years, it's clear that most Americans don't have the capacity and or discipline to save. We're bombarded with aspirational ads that make us want to spend. We compare ourselves to our neighbors who make us feel less worthy unless we spend as much or more than them. Credit cards make instant gratification so much easier. And the vast majority of car buyers spend way more than one-tenth of their gross income on a car. Saving money is hard because society makes spending so easy. Of course, there's no free lunch given a mortgage requires an interest payment, but statistics don't lie. The net worth of homeowners is multiples greater than renters, partly because of the forced savings component of paying down principal. The other reason is obviously the appreciation of property over time, even if the appreciation is just due to inflation. It's hard enough to save an amount equal to the amount of mortgage debt being paid off. It's even harder to save an amount equal to the total value of the property's equity thanks to capital appreciation. What started off as a $120,000 down payment has now turned into a paid off asset that if sold, would provide over a million dollars in cash after commission. I almost don't care about the 730% increase in equity from the initial down payment. All I care about is that 12 years later, this property is a wholly owned asset in my portfolio. Many renters like to tell me that they invest in difference by not owning. It's a good idea in practice, yet we all know the temptation to splurge tends to derail us from financially wise decisions. A mortgage truly is a forced savings account that has helped many middle-class people build wealth over time. Whether you pay your mortgage, contribute to a 401k, enact a dividend reinvestment plan, or invest in an after-tax investment account, make your contributions automatic. If they aren't automatic, it's just way too easy to cheat by contributing less or not contributing at all. You just listened to the post titled Mortgage as a Forced Savings Account to Build Wealth by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And thank you again to DesignCrowd for their support. DesignCrowd is a website that helps entrepreneurs and small businesses, from accountants and dentists to financial planners, marketers, and more, outsource or crowdsource custom logo, business card, and web design. Get the perfect custom design every time. For a special $100 VIP offer for our listeners, check out designcrowd.com finance to learn more and save up to $100 when you start your next project. And it's really simple to get started too. You post a brief describing the design you need. Then DesignCrowd will invite its 600,000 plus designers to submit, and within hours, you'll receive your first design. Over the course of three to 10 days, you'll likely have 60 to 100 or more different designs from designers around the world, and you get to pick the best one and approve payment. If you don't find a design you like, no worries. DesignCrowd has a money back guarantee. So again, for that $100 VIP offer, come by designcrowd.com slash finance. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com forward slash finance. Or simply enter the discount code finance when posting a project on DesignCrowd. And that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for being here and being a subscriber to the show. Have a great rest of your day. I will be back, of course, tomorrow with a post from Afford Anything. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits.